Okay, so now let's compare the population, the sample, and the SDOM. These are three things that we've looked at a lot. Uh, these are two things that we've looked at a lot before, but I want you to see how these all fit together. So remember, when we talked about the population before, we really called it the truth. I mean, this is the thing we really want to know. We don't actually want to know about samples. We really want to know about the population. The problem is, it's really hard to get empirical data stuff where you actually go out and get data from the world. It's impossible to get data on. And so largely, um, it's either theoretical or we just don't know what the population is like. Or um, when we do have known populations, they might be small populations or very, very well studied. Um, and the summary values for, those, for the population are called parameters, right? And in the same way, the samples are not the truth, and we're not really interested in samples, but we're using the sample as a window to the truth, right? What's nice about the sample is that unlike the population, it's, it's empirical. We could actually go out there and get data on it. And um, the summary values are called statistics, right? We call them statistics. And so for the population, we, call, uh, we symbolize the mean by saying mu. Here we call it x bar. Here the size is big N, but here the sample size, excuse me, is little n. Variance here is called sigma squared, whereas here it's um, little s, so this is the um, n minus 1 version squared, right? And for standard deviation, it's just um, sigma or s. Um, also, you might see big S, but when you use big S, you're not, uh, you're not approximating the population, you're not trying to approximate the population standard deviation. You're just interested in the actual standard deviation of the sample. Okay, so now that we know this, now how does the SDOM fit into all this? Well, the SDOM, is it the truth? Is it the thing we want to know? No, not really. Nor is it just a window to the truth. But in essence, what it really helps us do is it helps us get from this to this. It's sort of like the middleman. Because what the SDOM is, is like a whole bunch, a whole distribution of windows to truth, right? So although it's not the truth itself, it helps us interpret the sample because it's a whole bunch of windows to the truth. And you could sort of see, ah, where does this sample fit in to this um, sampling distribution of the mean, right? Um, it's, we don't get data on it. It's not empirical. It is theoretical, right? It's still a theoretical um, distribution, but we could easily generate it because of the CLT, right? Those principles help us know what the SDOM looks like. And instead of calling them parameters or statistics, what we call them is expected values, just like probability distributions. They're both um, theoretical uh, distributions of samples. And instead of calling it uh, mu or x bar, it's like we, it's, it's the window, it, it's the distribution of windows to the truth. So it's the mu of a whole bunch of x bars, right? And here, instead of uh, big N and little n, it's um, big N sub x bar, because it's saying it's, um, it's, uh, and this is only in the case where we use simulations. Not when we just derive it uh, through the central limit theorem. And variance, we'll call it uh, sigma squared, right? But with the x bar. And for standard deviation, instead of calling it sigma, it's just sigma sub x bar. So notice that there are these little x bars here, right? And that's what really sets the uh, sampling distribution of the mean apart because it's about the mean of means, the n of means, the variance of means, and the standard deviation of means.
right? So it's always about means, and so because of that, of, of sample means, and so because of that, you always see this sub x bar here for all these expected values. Okay, so that's how these things fit in together. And so now let's answer some of these questions, uh, questions that remain. This was from the previous lesson. Um, we, even when we went over sampling distributions in general, we had some questions that remained. Um, so perhaps the SNOM can help us answer some of these questions. So what happens when we don't know what the population looks like? Well, um, in the case of the SNOM, um, we don't have to know what the population looks like, right? So if you use SDOM or the sampling distribution of sample means, then you don't really need to know what the population looks like. We don't have to know whether it's uniform or skewed or anything like that um, if we use the SDOM because we know the shape, mean, and center, uh, shape, mean, and uh, spread of the SDOM, right? So we could use that instead of having to rely on the population. We could rely on the middleman. Great. Uh, can we have sampling distributions for summary statistics other than the mean? Why, yes, you can. Um, because if you want, you could play with the simulation further. And I'm just going to clear this and, and go with normal again. But we don't have to use the mean. We could actually use uh, the median, right? And so we could look at what the median looks like. Or we could look at standard deviation and look at what standard deviation looks like. We could also look at um, the range, the interquartile I don't know if this is interquartile range or just range. I think this might be just range. We could look at variance, right? Um, and we could look at that for a whole bunch of different, uh, different kinds of, of uh, ends, as well as different kinds of um, uh, different kinds of summary statistics, right? So if we look at that, we could see, ah, standard deviation, that's what that looks like. What about the median? So we could look at that, um, but when we look at medians and uh, standard deviation uh, or variance, um, the central limit theorem doesn't necessarily apply full force. For instance, uh, the median, here is not exactly going to be, ne not necessarily going to be the median here. Um, for instance, um, let me show you an example, a custom example. Uh, notice that the median here is, uh, oh, it is similar to the median here. Oh, ta da! But if we look at for small uh, sample sizes, let's look at that. Here, the median, still pretty similar. OK. So there, at least the median works for this one. OK, so median works. <laughs> but I think there are cases where the median doesn't necessarily work. Ah, like this one. Okay, so here the median is 17, but here the median is uh, 16. So the medians don't always necessarily equal the median of the um, sampling distribution of medians, right? So, um, so in in those in these kind of other uh, sample statistics, such as median and variance and, and standard deviation, you don't necessarily have all of the properties of the central limit theorem. There are some exceptions. For instance, standard uh, when you use standard deviation, very often you do get normally distributed, um, roughly normally distributed uh, distributions, um, but it's not quite as regular as the uh, sampling distribution of the mean. And so um, 
There are some exceptions here and there, but it's sort of hodgepodgey. Only the sampling distribution of the mean really fit all three properties of the central limit theorem. So here we can say yes, but central limit theorem does not necessarily apply. Okay. How do we know whether a sample is sufficiently unlikely? Well, I guess we don't really know for sure, but one of the things that we talked about when we talked about normal distributions in the past is that we could actually figure out, so if we have this normal distribution, we can tell you where 99% of the means might fall, or 95% or 90% of the means might fall. And so we could actually make these cutoff points once we know what, um, what standard deviation, that, uh, I mean, sorry, once we know uh, that it's a normal distribution. We could, we could decide, sort of, as long as it's, you know, way different than 99% of what's expected, we could say, oh, it's sufficiently unlikely. So we could set these sort of arbitrary marks. So um, although it doesn't say exactly how different it has to be, we could set marks given that it's a normal population. And uh, do we always have to simulate a large number of samples in order to get a sampling distribution? No, not necessarily. No, not necessarily because of the CLT. So the CLT does not rely on simulations. So simulations are, are really a, a way of empirically doing it, like so pretending to do it many, many times. But because of the CLT, we could actually go directly to it. We don't actually have to do the simulations.